Kamala Harris accepts his Democratic nomination as Trump prepares for debate. The race is on. Trump versus Harris. Who will win? Welcome to Hashtag Go Right with Peter Boykin, where we delve into the latest news with a constitutionalist for liberty viewpoint and a moderate slash conservative Republican partisan slant. Vice President Kamala Harris officially accepted the Democratic nomination. Despite joining the race late and without granting a single interview or holding a press conference, now that the Democratic National Convention has concluded, the spotlight shifts to her upcoming debate with former President Donald Trump. This will be a significant moment for Americans to see Harris confront her political radical record and Marxist visions of our constitution and you know for our constitutional republic's future. In polling averages, Harris leads significantly over Trump. Well, some polls, but we know that's crap. But the race remains tight with Trump at 46.9% and Harris at 48.4%. This cl I don't even know how I honestly don't know how. This close uh, margin underscores the deep divisions in our nation and highlights the importance of every vote in the upcoming election. Now, turning to the southern border, Donald Trump recently made a bold announcement during a visit. If elected, Trump promises that these con those convicted of sex trafficking, women and children, will face the death penalty penalty. This stance reflects his commitment to law and order, particularly concerning border security, an issue where he has consistently clashed with the current administration. On the economic front, crypto theft has surged by 80% this year. I know for a fact because I have been robbed of my crypto um, as well and hacked, and I'm really good at not getting hacked, but it's happened to me. It highlights a growing concern around digital security. Meanwhile, the cost of education continues to skyrocket with institutions like NYU, Tufts, Brown, Yale, and Washington University now costing over $90,000 per year. The increasing financial burden on students and families is a pressing issue that requires attention from all political sides. In a surprising turn, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp has endorsed Donald Trump after years of differences. This endorsement may signal a shift in the Republican Party's internal dynamics as key figures rally behind the former president. Finally... In other news, Arizona authorities recently arrested a man for threatening to kill former President Donald Trump before a planned campaign event. This incident underscores the heightened tensions and risks faced by political figures in our polarized society. In a lighter note, rumors suggested that Chick-fil-A, known for its family-friendly fa family image, may be launching a streaming service featuring unscripted, family-oriented content. While this move is yet to be confirmed, it would represent an interesting expansion for the fast food giant. However, not all news is uplifting. A federal judge recently ruled that a Virginia school district cannot prevent a transgender male from playing on a girls' middle school tennis team while his lawsuit continues. Personally, um, I think the biggest issue is the dressing area. Uh, not so much that they play, especially in middle school, elementary, even high school. When it comes to professional sports, that's completely different. The Olympics gets completely different. Um, before puberty and stuff like that, because middle school, it doesn't matter that much, honestly, to be honest. But it does matter about the dressing room area, and I don't think a 
biological male should has any business in a biological female's dressing room and vice versa. That's why there should be more private rooms, private dressing areas for privacy, honestly. Um, the ruling adds to the ongoing debate surrounding gender, gendered identity and sports participation, issues that continue to polarize the nation. Now, in the business sector, Jack Daniels Whiskey has reportedly decided to end its diversity, equity, and inclusion program following a boycott threat. This decision reflects the growing pushback against corporate policies perceived as catering to political correctness over traditional values. Though, I don't have a problem with diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I do think companies should have programs like that. But what happens is when they push these programs so much that they are excluding people now pushing for other people and then excluding and then, no, then it causes no more um, equality. That's the problem. So I don't like that corporations are scared of DEI because they've used it in the extreme. I do want to work for a company that has no problem with me being a gay male or somebody being black or etc cetera, etc. Cetera. We don't want companies to start being afraid of diversity, inclusion, and acceptance of others. So we have to be careful not to go too far, which is another reason why I'm a constitutional for liberty and I'm a moderate. Moderation is the best key. Meanwhile, the Ford Motor Company has canceled plans for an electronic, electric three-row SUV, opting instead to develop hybrid models. Great. Hybrid works. Electric solo is BS. Now, this shift comes as car manufacturers adjust to lower-than-expected demand for electric vehicles. Well, yeah, nobody wants to sit and charge your car for 20 hours, or you can't charge it in the cold, or you can't go anywhere. And a lot of people don't want to be traced everywhere. Signaling a potential pivot in the automotive industry's future. Hybrid is the best. Still take gas, use solar, use electric, little wind power. I mean, use what you can, but it needs to be hybrid. Hybrid, again, again, it all comes down to politics. If you say the left is electric and the right is gas, they're both extremes on how you can power things. But if you go hybrid, that's moderate. That's finding a mixture, a compromise of using gas and electric or solar or wind or whatever, and you've come out with a better product that not only can save energy, but still have what's needed to in emergencies or to go longer distances. It works. Moderation works, folks. It will work in hybrid. Now, for, former President Donald Trump responded in real time to Vice President Kamala Harris's speech at the Democratic National Convention. Trump criticized Harris, stating, quote, She's done nothing for three and a half years but talk. And that's what she's doing tonight. She's complaining about everything but doing nothing. He went further to accuse Harris of enabling foreign powers to grow stronger while neglecting crucial issues at home. This reminds me of some show was on yesterday. You know, I had all these talk shows during the day. And there was one that a lot of times they seemed to be even. But for some, I was listening in the other room and they were like swooning, swooning over the DNC. Oh, oh, come out of here. Oh, this is, oh, this is wonderful. Oh, this is wonderful. And then there's a guy on the show, and I was like the Four Connect or something. It's, it's one of these shows. Um, I always thought the guy on there was a little bit more moderate, right wing, and possibly gay. He could be a gay for Trump. Um, he stated, look, we get it. You talked about Trump in the convention like 412 times. I've been counting. But when are you going to talk about real things like the economy or fixing things? What are you going to do about I can't pay bills, people can't pay bills, what people are going to do? And he said it. It was like somebody's got some sense. 
But you know what? They brushed him. Like, well, that's nice. And they mushed him to the next segment real quick. I mean, it's like, come on, man. Just, like, ignore the problems. Ignore the problems. Just like Kamala Harris, the, the borders are ignoring the border. Problems are there. As long as I have to pay attention to them, there's no problem. There's no problem. As long as it's not sitting in front of my face. It's like ignoring the spilt bucket on the floor and just walking around it. I didn't see anything. Doesn't clean up the spill. Doesn't fix the mess. Harris, in her speech, attempted to take credit for a border bill she claims was the strongest in decades, yet Trump dismissed it as a political ploy that would have opened the door for millions of illegal immigrants. He reminded America of his own record, stating, We had the safest border in recorded history. On abortion, Harris accused Trump of seeking to limit access of birth control and enact a nationwide ban. Trump rebutted these claims as false, emphasizing that he believes the issue should be left to the states as attended by the Supreme Court's decision in overturning Roe v. Wade. Because we've already heard the Democrats don't believe that the Supreme Court should be the law of the land because... Right now, they don't have enough liberals in there to pass the bills. They had no problem beforehand, but now that they've lost some of these decisions, are they being re-examined? All of a sudden, the Supreme Court should be, people should be replaced, and they should have more liberals, and we're not going to pay attention. It's like, nah, 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 I'm not listening, not listening. It's crazy. Now, finally, in legal news... The Supreme Court has partially reinstated an Arizona voting law requiring proof of citizenship for state elections while still allowing individuals to register for federal elections without such proof. This decision reflects ongoing debates over election integrity and the balance between federal and state powers in our constitutional republic. Now let's do a hashtag go right recap real quick. Real quick, who do you think is going to win the election? My prediction is it's going to be either tight between Trump and Harris, don't even know why, or it's going to be a landslide win for Donald Trump in the status of how they felt in 2016. And they'll freak out. And they'll claim that the election was frauded. And they'll claim that Donald Trump didn't win, just like they did in 2016. But remember, in 2020, every time we talked about the election being scammed and frauded, oh, no, 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 Biden won, Biden won, Biden won. And then they went after us because of conspiracy theories. Well, they came up with the whole Russia Gate and everything else, Ukraine, Russia Gate, everything else they threw at Donald Trump. They even tried to assassinate Donald Trump. But I think Donald Trump's going to ultimately win. But when he wins, we folks, we need to look towards the future. I'm not sure about um, Vance, Pence, whatever his damn name is. We've got to look to the future and we've got to look for more candidates that are in the Constitutional for Liberty range more moderate candidates that are leaders and not dividers. And that's my minute here. So that's all for the edition of this edition of Hashtag Go Right with Peter Boykin. Stay tuned as we continue to bring you the news with a commitment to liberty and the principles of our founding fathers. And you can check out my website, GoRightNews.com, PeterBoykin.com. I'm on Kick on kicks.com slash Peter Boykin. I am on Rumble at rumble.com slash go right news. And there's other links listed on the other websites. Hope to see you there. I got my podcast on Spreaker as well, which is put on Spotify. And I did publish one of my first songs today under Peter Boykin. Um, will probably be distributed sometime by the end of the month. I still have about 20 other songs to put out there. But again, people... Stay tuned. We're going to have more news coming out at you. Same format, same time. Kind of like doing this. God bless everybody. Peace.